Does the Wim Hof Method cause tinnitus? About two years ago, I started getting emails from readers all across the world complaining about how their ears wouldn't stop ringing after they started doing the Wim Hof breath work. I'd written a book about all things Wim Hof, and I was worried I'd missed a potentially dangerous side effect that people should really know about. And I wasn't the only one who'd gotten an earful about it. Mostly the people who are doing this, they, they do it like directly, boom, and more. And I want more, and that, oh, something is happening. And then you get mails about te uh, tinnitus, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 until your, your, your phone is ringing so much, you get tinnitus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, this fun, uh, it's stupid. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to explain why I started investigating the relationship between persistent ear ringing and the Wim Hof method. And then, what breathwork experts, audiologists, and ultimately Wim Hof himself have to say about it. Along the way, I learned some fascinating things about tinnitus. Not only how to pronounce it correctly, it's tinnitus, not tinnitus. And I'm going to sort of mess that up through this whole video. But also, it's underlying physiology and ways to treat it once it flares up. Finally, I was surprised to find some ways that we can actually use tinnitus symptoms as a gauge to understand the inner workings of our nervous systems. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. First, let's talk a little bit about how this problem came to my attention. At the beginning of the COVID pandemic, three people in different parts of the world sent me messages about how they were new Wim Hof Method practitioners and they were really concerned that after several rounds of Wim Hof breath work, they got a whoosh of tinnitus that just wouldn't go away. This was at the same time that I had just released my book, The Wedge, about how the nervous system and the environment relate to one another through positive and negative feedback loops, and I was concerned that tinnitus might be a hidden side effect of too much heavy breathing. I posted a question on Reddit about it, and the responses flooded in. I promised I would look into it, and then, well, I got busy with other things. In the meantime, people never stop posting about it. I mean, right now, it feels as if every other question on the R Becoming the Iceman subreddit is someone or another trying to figure out why their ears are ringing. It was definitely a problem. In fact, around the same time, I noticed that I was starting to have this low-grade ringing in my ears, too. People on Reddit weighed in with their own ideas about what exactly was going on, and I'll link to my Reddit post as well as some related research articles and sources down below. The reader's feedback was amazing because it illustrated interesting patterns. Most people reported that they hear whooshing in their ears right after their last breath holds in the breathing pattern but that usually went away two or three minutes afterwards. This is totally normal and not a concern at all. This is an example of what that sounds like for me. After the Wim Hof breathing, your heart rate goes up, and what you're hearing is the sound of blood rushing through the vessels in your ears. It goes away when your heart rate goes down. However, a few people on the subreddit reported that their tinnitus got much worse when they performed an advanced Wim Hof breath maneuver of squeezing blood up to their heads during full lung retentions. In the wedge, I described how this technique can have some mild psychedelic effects. It's called DMT breathing. But people were also coming out of the breath hold with ringing that just wouldn't go away. Some Redditors said that switching to just nasal breathing helped calm down the tones when they got annoying, while others said that they noticed a connection between the Wim Hof method, tinnitus, and TMJ joint pain, which is inflammation in their jaws, which can get really annoying. Finally, a few people said that they didn't think that the Wim Hof method causes tinnitus at all. Rather, it was just that it made them so much more aware of their bodies and the things that were already happening inside. Now, those were all super interesting data points, some of which proved more prescient than I had thought they would. Based on their responses, I suspected that the people who had tinnitus had extremely high sympathetic activation during the breath work and weren't able to get back down to homeostasis during their recovery breaths. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the terminology, the term sympathetic activation means a high fight or flight response. Meanwhile, 
Parasympathetic is the opposite. The nervous system goes into its rest and digest mode. But I'm just an investigative journalist, and I wanted to get a second opinion, and my first stop was to call up Brian McKenzie, who is a human performance specialist, breath worker, and someone who makes an appearance in both What Doesn't Kill Us and The Wedge. He was driving between California and Colorado, so I could only get him on the phone, but here's a pic from the last time I interviewed him. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll, I'll go into some things that I do understand, but then I'm going to speculate on why you're getting bombarded. Brian works with a lot of top athletes and high performers, and part of the problem, he says, is that the type of the people who seek out the Wim Hof Method are already prone to anxiety. A lot of people who are, highly are more sympathetically charged, they're now doing something that the Wim Hof Method works really well for very healthy people. Hmm. Okay. The Wim Hof Method does not work really well for unhealthy people. And that has been my uh, experience with it. So people who, who and, and we see that with uh, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, right? And so people who have high anxiety, not all, but a lot of people who have high anxiety don't do well with the Wim Hof method. It mm -hmm. fucking sends them into a panic switch because they hyperventilate and sets off the switches for panic. Tinnitus being a byproduct of high sympathetic drive, you're setting off that sympathetic drive, and it's hard to actually get that back down, especially with the fact that our, from a cultural standpoint, I mean, we just started with social media, everything's an on switch. Ideally, the Wim Hof method is supposed to balance out the high energy state you get during the hyperventilation with a very relaxed one during the breath retention. So what Brian was saying runs a little against my own experience with the Wim Hof method because I find that it actually helps me when I'm anxious. Still, Brian is right that not everyone's nervous system resets so easily. I've seen people panic when they get into ice baths and jump out before they find the ability to take control of their breathing. I've also seen people have panic attacks during the initial rounds of hyperventilation before they even get started to hold their breath. When people don't complete both aspects of the practice, they can end up worse off than when they started because their whole body is out of balance. This makes sense to me, but what about tinnitus specifically? For that, I needed a specialist. Uh, so my name is Craig Casper. I am a uh, audiologist by training for the past 26 years. Dr. Casper has worked with some of the most renowned tinnitus researchers in the world, and his own practice also focuses on human performance and breath work. So he's sort of the ideal guy to talk to. So what exactly is tinnitus? So what happens is we have these tens of thousands of, of sensory cells that are picking up sound, transferring it to the nerve, which ultimately brings it up to the auditory cortex where we hear and interpret sound. When we have hearing loss, what occurs is those sensory cells start to die off as a result of the things we just talked about. And the sound doesn't get to the brain as robust as it once did. And that's where something really interesting happens. The brain, the temporal lobe actually starts to shift its organization because of lack of input. And the brain turns up its internal amplifiers and it creates a phantom auditory perception, similar to phantom limb perception. Just about everyone will have some level of tinnitus as they age because hearing loss is basically inevitable. As we get older, our hearing starts to deteriorate and certain tones don't make it into the brain as well as they once did. However, instead of just leaving that blank spot in the sound wave empty, the brain fills in the gaps. My very mild tinnitus sounds like a soft version of this. This is because hearing doesn't happen in the ears. It occurs in the brain. All that your nerves and sensory organs do is transmit raw data from the outside world into the gray matter where it enters your consciousness when you perceive it. This is actually a very deep concept that can be a little tricky to um, wrap your mind around. In The Wedge, I explained it by comparing the brain to a computer. 
The bits and bytes of human experience are software made up of packages of information that combine data from the hardware sensory organs with the emotional state you had when you first picked up the sensation. These packages of information are what I call neural symbols that the brain stores and assembles together like a computer program to make a model of the world that the body moves around in. Now, that's really, really complex, and I will do a video about that sometime specifically. But I did give a talk in Aspen a little while ago that went into a lot more depth that you can check out now. To get back onto topic, as Dr. Casper puts it, tinnitus is a feedback loop between the audio gaps in our sensory system and the brain's phantom perception but it only becomes a problem when our anxiety latches onto the sound and starts driving us a little crazy. It's not just the auditory centers that are involved when it comes to tinnitus. It's the limbic system, the emotional centers of the brain that we know for a fact that are roped in. And what happens when we're bothered by our tinnitus is that a loop is forged, basically a learned response. We hear the tinnitus, we become stressed. We get stressed, we hear it more. And then there's that vicious plastic cycle, that's learned response that all of a sudden we hear our tinnitus and we're bothered by it. In other words, tinnitus is all in your head, but it has real world consequences. But usually there's some sort of a triggering event that's an emotional event. So for instance, mm -hmm. if you talk to patients when they were first bothered by their tinnitus, loss of a job, lost a loved one, uh, went through a highly stressful event, something emotional has triggered off their awareness of their tinnitus. And then ultimately that, that fuel and that kind of, um, uh, that learned response becomes the disturbance where they just can't sleep at night. Uh, they have trouble concentrating during the day. And some people get to the point where they are actually suicidal with their tinnitus because they just cannot get away from it. Okay, so now we have the nuts and bolts of the sympathetic activation and the physiology of tinnitus. So let's put the pieces together and understand how this all connects to the Wim Hof method. The Wim Hof method, from what I understand, a lot of it is kind of upregulating uh, in many respects. When you're upregulating, upregula you're impacting your emotional centers. It's a stressful response and it's fueling that tinnitus loop. Mm -hmm. So what might have been present before was kind of in the background because it didn't mean anything. And then all of a sudden you're getting stressed and you're fueling it. So yeah, this may not be what I wanted to hear, but we can blame the Wim Hof method for causing tinnitus. Hof's breathing upregulates, which is just a fancy word for heightens, our sensory perception, at the same time that it engages the emotional centers of the brain. When the breather is excited, that natural ringing from increased blood flow in the ear can seem unusually loud. And if your brain latches onto that ringing, you might enter into this endless tinnitus loop fueled by your own anxiety. At this point, I had to take what I'd learned right to Wim, who had several important observations, this one being my favorite. Take it easy. Go and do the breathing but take it easy. Don't go. <laughs> so I see some people really go berserk. Brian McKenzie, Dr. Casper, and Wim Hof all agreed that too much upregulation during the breath work can be the catalyst for long-term tinnitus. So that's one way that the tinnitus cycle can get going. But is this hopeless? I have solutions for that. So it's the brain. And as it is the brain, the neuroplasticity in the brain needs to be activated. When I started hearing about tinnitus and the Wim Hof breathwork, I advised people to take a step back from the breathwork, assuming that either they were doing the technique incorrectly, or there was something about their individual biology that wasn't a good fit. I didn't know exactly what sort of techniques to offer someone to make it all go away, but I assumed that over time they would return to homeostasis. And while I think that advice is still good, Brian McKenzie, Craig Casper, and Wim Hof all agree that doing breathwork that focuses on down regulation might actually be better than simply taking time off. This is what Wim Hof recommends. Healing is the, uh, is the, is the matter. And healing is being done by doing the retentions after exhalation without the inhale hold. So the 30, 40 deep breaths, 
pull it in, let it go, and stop. And then increasingly every round, uh, uh, one minute, two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes, things like that. But no, at the end, when you want to breathe again, pull it in and hold because there is something going on and you don't want to uh, force it at that mm -hmm. moment. It needs to heal. Wim is describing the basic breathing method that he teaches in his introductory classes, several rounds of hyperventilation followed by exhalation breath holds. The exhale holds are important because they balance out the intense breath sprints that mimic what a person might feel during a panic attack. Too much panic in your nervous system and you need to downregulate with a really, really good restful breath hold. However, if downregulation is the main goal, then maybe the Wim Hof method isn't the perfect cure on its own to sort out tinnitus and anxiety for all people. In fact, other types of breathwork could be even better for you. Any method that focuses on slow breathing patterns will be useful. I'd suggest the Bateco breathing that Patrick McEwen explains in his book, The Oxygen Advantage, or the ever popular box breathing used first by Navy SEALs. But if breath work isn't your thing anymore, then maybe consider meditation or flotation tanks. All of these methods enhance your ability to relax and should have a beneficial effect on anxiety and tinnitus. That said, I think it's important to note here that there's a world where your tinnitus might never go away. Hearing loss is almost inevitable over time, and the brain naturally wants to fill in those silent gaps with its own not-so-great soundtrack. But even that has a silver lining. So we oftentimes counsel patients to say, look, utilize your tinnitus as a gauge for where your, your mindset is. Huh. So it's yeah. like using it as a tool, just like you're breathing. So if you're breathing... <sighs> you're stressed. If you're nice, mm -hmm. slow belly breaths, you're relaxed and you don't even realize that unless you pay attention to it. Right. That's awesome. I can, I, you know, th this should be the, uh, the, the title of your next book. Um, <laughs> tinnitus is my super tinnitus is my superpower. One last note, Dr. Casper said that tinnitus can also have purely physical causes, particularly in combination with TMJ joint or damage in the cervical spine. So if you have those conditions, or if your tinnitus is stronger in one ear than the other, you might want to see an audiologist or medical practitioner who can better diagnose the underlying issue. I hope this video answers the most pressing questions about tinnitus and the Wim Hof method. The thing that I love about this topic is that it touches on so many other parts of the research that I've been doing for years. If you want to know more about my 12 year journey working with Wim Hof and how the cold and breathwork changed my life, check out my book, What Doesn't Kill Us, especially if you like audiobooks, because I read it myself. Alternately, if you've already gone deep into those things and want to know what to try next, my book, The Wedge, is an exciting exploration into the structure of the human nervous system and how I ended up using everything from flotation tanks and saunas to MDMA, ayahuasca, and even throwing kettlebells to increase my overall resilience and take control of depression and anxiety. I've also done a bunch of videos that you can find in the related playlists on this channel. I'd love to know your own experiences with tinnitus and breathwork down in the comments. Maybe you've discovered some out-of-the-box methods that I've never even dreamed of. Or maybe you've come across things that I should take a deeper dive into for another video. Let me know, and don't forget to like and subscribe.